Leck and Greg Vegan Camp, the 28th of February 2021. I was making some compost out of some cassava and then I heard a snake or something from the outside of the kitchen. And it was not a snake, it was the papaya tree falling. I knew it was sick, but I didn't know it was so sick that it would start to fall. And then I quickly grabbed the a bamboo so I could uh, support it. Now I just need to cut it down. It lucky it didn't go into the, the kitchen and the house. Sometimes you just need to drop everything you're doing and check out if it's a snake or a giant papaya falling. And this is how a termite attack looks like. You can see some brown stuff and you can see the termites. Move the big part of the branch outside into the sun because the termites don't like the sun. Compost the termites. And yeah, when you get sap on your skin, it's itchy and it's a sign that you need to wash it away. Sap from uh, papaya is not fun. Go wash. We have papaya salad. No more chilies. But to the rescue, we have the green peppers. And just recently I found out, okay, it is growing here. It's growing up like a, a big stem here, growing up the longan tree. So it's going up and there is like a lot of, of hanging um, green peppers up there. I don't know if you can spot them. And also you can see here, green peppers, green peppers for the win. So now I love green peppers in my papaya salad. Some people like to grind their fresh coffee beans. I like to grind my freshly picked green peppers. It's such a good smell, man. And the sweet potatoes are so sweet that you don't need to put any sugar in your papaya salad. Whoa, mega arroyo, man. Oh, I'm so full. I'm super full. It's so tasty. Imak. Bananas. The automatic solar powered sprinkler system here. The tomatoes are getting bigger. The netting over the beds needed to be uh, removed. And now there is like a fence all around this area so the chicken won't come in and destroy everything. My permaculture gardening stuff because they love to dig in rice straw. Over here, I've upgraded the solar panel to a bigger one. I think this one is about 30 watts. It's for a 12 volt system. And here, what I've done is that I've upgraded solar charge controller. And this solar charge control actually has a timer, it's a timing uh, function. So I don't really need this timer anymore. I also upgraded the battery. Current voltage of the battery is 14.2 volts. With the new solar charge controller and the, the bigger solar panel and the better battery. Something that needed to be done because if you use a, one of the cheap solar charge controllers, it won't really take out the energy from the solar panel that well. It doesn't have like a, a safety cutoff. It, it has a cutoff, but it will still deplete the battery because it doesn't have a um, recovery voltage setting. So if you use a cheap a solar charge controller it will probably destroy your battery because it will just drop to a voltage and then shut off the output power and then the voltage on the battery goes up and then it says okay now it's over my minimum voltage and it will switch on this uh, automatic pneumatic valve that will it will it just switched on and off because the voltage fell under the minimum wanted value of the battery but when it's switched off, the voltage on the battery automatically goes up, of course. So, and then it just tick, 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 and then just destroyed the battery like that. You need a good solar charge controller, good battery, and a little bit overpowered solar panel. When you have that, then everything works fine, I think. And otherwise, just stick with little automatic drip system um, switches that don't use much power. They're just like run on batteries and then run for on a 9 volt battery or two small 1.2 volt batteries. 
and they last for three three or four months. It really depends on what you want. Drip systems, the, the small ones, they, they work on the battery, but if you want a sprinkler system and you want the full power of the from the pipe, then you need a, like a pneumatic valve. So this works quite well if you want a sprinkler system and you don't have enough pressure in your water pipes. Lovely mangoes, the local variety, not Nam Dog Mai. This tree is doing very well. A bunch of small jacks. Leaves from the temple to make more compost and also some uh, coconut husks from local trader. Little hill of rice straw. It has been quite brutal in February with the mango stem borers. Really destroy a lot of mango production here. It's, it's quite brutal. So what I'm hoping is that these bugs will attract some predators, like birds and other insects, maybe wasps, that will come and eat these insects that will in infect ma mango trees. So th this is usually what happens in nature. If something is overwhelming the mango trees, then it will attract birds and other insects that will take care of it. Scientists have already discovered that plants are able to send signals that insects and other living beings can understand and then they come to the rescue of the plants. I don't know if the mango trees can do the same and communicate with the birds or wasps and say hey we have these insects come and eat, eat them before we die or mango trees die. And this is one of the issues of, with, the, with orchards that have a high concentration of, of like a, a single fruit and when you have like a single fruit, like a lot of mango trees, as we have here, when something is wrong, then it spreads quite quickly to the others. It's best to have a variety. Now let's see what happens. We are growing more different trees, avocados, and like spreading a little bit. Anyway, the, the mango trees have a lot of flowers now, and this is late for, for the mangoes to have flowers. So we will have mangoes, oh, some of them actually are little mangoes and some of them are big, bigger mangoes and this is actually quite good for somebody like me because it will give me mangoes longer in a longer period and for people who want to sell them it's also better because we will have mangoes off season completely naturally I think there will be more mangoes like this having um, fruit off season because the the rainy season was long and probably many other areas where the moisture destroyed some of the first flowers. The cool thing is that even though the first flowers were destroyed by the moisture, like some fung fungus or something, uh, then the dry season kicks in and the fungus cannot grow anymore. The first flowers just disappear and the mangoes start to shoot new, new flowers because they are under stress under this, these conditions where it's like super dry, it's mega dry. Normally here it would be green, but it's like starting to get very brown. But th th there was a lot of rain this season, so we still have some parts of green, which is not, not very normal. Like we have already end of February and this would be completely brown in, in usual conditions. Also one thing that happens when the powder post beetles are inside the branches sometimes the branch will snap and there will be like two powder post, no, not powder post, mango stem borers there will be like worms inside and when they when the branch breaks they might might fall off into the ground and get get eaten by either ants or there will be Termites. So termites and ants will just eat these sometimes. I'm not, I've never seen termites eat them. I've seen ants eat termites and I've seen ants eat these bugs. So sometimes nature will just regulate itself and then ants will go in and take care of the eggs and whatever. It's another drip system with uh, avocado trees. I think I spoke about this last time but the new thing is that we have uh, installed these nets so the chicken won't come in and destroy the mulch. Luckily we have more papaya trees and these papayas are the orange ones and they're so good. Over here and the red ones are behind and more orange over here. So it's good that we don't only have one papaya tree, we have many. And here we have a, a lot of 
the flowers of longan are ready and they actually the small longans are already coming up and we have a mango tree this is a mango tree and a longan tree together growing this is the asparagus field very very dry around here leg is just like she actually started to do some gardening near her mother's house where she has completely fenced off because here the chicken just come in and destroy her so she's like getting tired of the chicken but the the salad is growing okay and we have the the salad flowers so we collect the seeds or like collect the, the seeds and we can grow more salad from the the seeds of these salads it's another variety of uh, papayas like the very long one is also very nice to eat it's nice to have different varieties to eat different types and different tastes and this is the second papaya tree with the long type wonder when lex lime caviar lime will start producing flowers mulberries coming up going to be great mini longans butterflies are drinking from the watermelon